If you're anything like me, your first experience with Seq24 probably went a little bit like this. You ran an apt cache search for a MIDI sequencer, saw it in the list and thought, hmm, that looks interesting. Then you installed it and ran it, and then wondered what the hell you were looking at. That's because when you think of MIDI sequences, you think of apps like Rose Garden or Q-Tractor, with a bunch of tracks that run on a timeline from left to right. But Seq24 isn't like that. It's based on hardware sequences like Akai's MPCs or the Alesis MMT8. Instead of having tracks, these sequences are based on patterns, essentially short loops of MIDI data, which you can then loop, layer and arrange into complete songs either ahead of time or on the fly. Seq24 is actually quite a simple app, almost to a fault. There's no audio support, no synth or effect plugins, and it's nigh on impossible to write songs with changing tempos or time signatures. But if you're comfortable with using soft synths on the jack, or you have hardware synths to work with, you can stick to a fairly straightforward beat, and you want to improvise or perform in real time, then Seq24 is fantastic. Well, here we are with that crazy Seq24 front page open. Um, just a quick word on this, because this is probably the most confusing part of Seq24. This is not a timeline. This is a palette of patterns, if you want to think of it that way. Each one of these slots is a pattern or a potential pattern, um, and you can then trigger these on and off in real time. It'll become more obvious once we get some patterns up on the board. Now, just a quick note on some synths that I've got set up for this. We've got, over on this other tab, we've got X synth set up. So I've just got a little bass patch set up in here. And we've got hydrogen set up with some with a 909 kit. Good stuff. Um, so let's make some some crappy techno. So here we have Seq24. We'll add a pattern. Just right click new, and we'll make a pattern. We'll call it in here bass. Now we click here to say where we want to send that. So we want to send that to this pattern to Xsynth. So now we click in that piano roll there, we get the sound coming through X synth. So let's... Cool. Now, to enter notes, you just right, hold the right mouse button, and you get a pointer icon, a pencil icon, then just click. Nice, easy little arpeggiated bass pattern there. Um, and this, just to note, is the MIDI channel you're sending on. You probably just want to send on channel one for the most part. Um, a quick view of other things in the piano roll. This is the velocity, as you'd expect. You can edit that pretty easily. Um, this is the length of the pattern. In this case, we've only got it set to one bar. You can set it how many bars you want. Um, this is the length of the grid, the size of the grid, and these are the size of the notes that you're entering. So if you wanted to enter shorter notes, you can change that. Um, we'll just leave it at that for now. So we've got a little bass pattern happening. If we hit play here at the moment, you'll see that the little line will start moving through that pattern, but it's not actually playing. We haven't armed this pattern yet. So let's stop the transport. Click in there to arm it so it becomes black and then hit play. Yeah, awesome. So that's basically the, the process by which you create a pattern and then arm it so that it actually plays. Um, we'll just save that now. Let's just save the file as well. Um, and let's create a little drum track as well. So add another pattern. This one will send to hydrogen. Now yeah, let's find that. Cool. Got the bass note. Now let's just put down a bass and a bass and I think this is the snare. Yep, cool, that's the snare. Excellent. So we can arm that. And let's call this now play that. Now those notes are being cut off, those drum sounds are being cut off because they're being triggered and then the notes ending, just uh, the 16th of a note later. What we'll do is we'll just make those notes a bit bigger. You could click here, change the note length uh, to 1 8th and, um, and re-enter them, but we'll just select them. If you click on one with the middle mouse button and drag, that lets you extend the length of a note. So you can do it on individual notes or you can select multiple notes and extend them. So. Now we've extended those out to give those drum sounds a bit more time to play. 
Excellent. That's what we that's what we think we should be hearing. So let's just enable both of those. Cool. Excellent. That's all working. Let's create another pattern. Chuck some hats in. That's a symbol. Just open hats. I'm going to set both of these. I want to make some shorter notes. In there. Uh, the reason we do that, if we just change the note length but not the grid length, we'd still, whoops, we still get the point. But we had to enter shorter notes, but still only on those grid boundaries. So I needed to, I needed to change the grid size there as well. So we've got a little hat pattern now as well. Cool. So now we can play all those. That's all working. That's working really well, actually. Let's save that again. Now, just to show you quickly what you can do with SIG24 on the fly. Let's just close all these. We'll start up playing without having any of the, the patterns enabled. And let's just enable one. Now let's enable another. And you can see these letters and numbers in the bottom right hand corner. These are keyboard keys that you can use to trigger and untrigger the notes as well, the other patterns as well. So we can do the same thing with the keyboard. Um, so that's really the basics of SIG24. So we've just created a few patterns, we've arranged them, and we've set them, hooked them up to some synths, and we've triggered them in real time, both with the mouse and from the keyboard as well. Um, there is, just to show you very quickly, there is actually a song editor in SIG24. So if you want to actually write a complete song, you can do that as well. So you can actually write out the sequence of the patterns as you want the, to do them, so you can, yeah. So we'd have the bass for, for two bars, and then we'd have the kick and snare come in, and then we'd have the hats come in another two bars later. So you can definitely do that, but I find that it's a lot more fun and it's a lot more flexible to just do it in real time. Um, and there are some techniques that I'll show you later on that let you do uh, even more impressive stuff with the real-time triggering. Um, but for now, that's the basics of SIG24. Hope you've enjoyed that, and we'll see you again next time. Cheers. Cheers.